The number of escalating conflicts worldwide is increasing. Militärputsch in Myanmar. Der russische Angriffskrieg gegen die Ukraine. Im Sudan. Im westafrikanischen Liga. Aserbaidschan. Wir befinden uns im Krieg, nicht in einer Operation, nicht im Gefecht, im Krieg. Even though 10 years ago the Israeli historian Jewel Noah Harari wrote, never before has peace been so prevalent that people could not even imagine war. In the early 21st century, uh, largely thanks to the global liberal order, humanity has experienced the most peaceful and prosperous era in history. That era is now over. So, what changed since then? Ukraine, Sudan, Israel. Experts say we are witnessing a cascade of wars. The number of war casualties worldwide is increasing. We all feel pain. We all love our children, our spouses, our parents. So instead of fighting each other, we should work towards our shared interests. This was the simple idea behind the global liberal order. Okay, stop. Global liberal order. What's that? After the Second World War, the US set up a complex system of alliances and institutions. The US, as the by far strongest military and economy, safeguards global stability. One unshakable unity of determination to find a way to end war. Member states commit to universal and liberal values. They cooperate in promoting human rights, in free trade, and they stop fighting wars of conquest. Indeed, our international order has been so successful that we take it as a given that great powers no longer fight world wars. You know, the global liberal order was, was far from perfect, had many, many problems. And this order was attacked and destroyed. And when there is no order, what you get is this order. Chaos, violence, and it's spreading. The system isn't working anymore. But why? Two theories about that are all over the scientific debate. Populism and polarity. The theory of polarity explains how many countries are powerful enough to influence world politics to their own desires. In a multipolar system, three or more countries are trying to achieve just that. On their own, they are in balance. Alliances can plunge the system into chaos. The consequence? The Thirty Years' War, the Nine Years' War, the Seven Years' War, the Napoleonic Wars, World War I, World War II. In a bipolar system, two more or less equally powerful countries are facing each other, as during the Cold War. In theory, it's the most stable system. In reality, though, the bipolar order led to a whole array of proxy wars. As in Korea, Vietnam and Afghanistan. Since the end of the Cold War, the US were the sole superpower in a unipolar system. Which brings us back to the present and the global liberal order. But, according to experts, this order has three fatal flaws. The invasions of Iraq and Afghanistan proved that not even the US military might can enforce sustainable regime change. Growing parts of the populations in Western democracies reacted with nationalism to refugees from North Africa and the Middle East. And the consequences of a globalized economy. While China rose, the US and Europe saw increasing job losses and income inequality. All three led to a rise in populism. How exactly does populism attack the world order? From this day forward, it's going to be only America first. America first. It's always about a strong leader who supposedly has to protect the nation from outsiders. To do so, civil society, the justice system and media need to be restricted. We have been ruled for close to 14 years by a populist strongman, Benjamin Netanyahu, who built his career on dividing the nation against itself. If you vote for populist strongmen 
to divide society and dismantle the state, this is the danger. That when you need the state most, they will no longer be there. The United States will withdraw from the Paris Climate Accord, from the Trans-Pacific Partnership, from the UN Human Rights Council. In the mind of populists, um, any global cooperation is, is almost like treason. All right, we got the theories, but how does that explain the wars? The US are still the economic, technological and military powerhouse of the world. But are they still an uncontested unipolar power? Multipolar world. Multipolar. Multipolar. multipolar world. Many think we've already been living in a less stable, multipolar world for a long time. The trade influence of the EU, China's great power ambition, the potential of India's population, but also climate change and migration might be counted as a pole nowadays. We are definitely for many years no longer in a unipolar world. Um, you know, in some respects, the rise of new powers is not a bad thing. It's good if a new powers like India, like Brazil, um, re receive a greater say about world affairs. Now, if you have some alternative idea, you don't like the liberal order, you don't like liberal values, but you do have some alternative set of values and norms that is not true only for your country, that can serve as universal values for the whole human community, okay, let's hear the alternative. But simply to attack the universal liberal values and, and institutions without replacing them with anything, this is a recipe for a global disaster. Some argue that the Trump style of populism has shifted the attention of the US from a global to an inward focus. Further, that the war in Ukraine has distracted the United States from preventing other conflicts. And third, the increasing violence from states like Azerbaijan, militaries in the Sahel region, or from the Hamas terrorists would show that they don't fear the US military might no more. We are sliding back to the jungle. The global liberal order is uh, in disarray, if not in, in collapse. It is replaced by chaos and violence. The international system is showing fragmentation. Free trade deals fail. Autocrats like Turkish Prime Minister Erdogan impede unity in NATO. The Hamas, bir terör örgütü değil, topraklarını ve vatandaşlarını koruma mücadelesi. In the UN General Assembly, actual allies are not voting alongside each other anymore. Worldwide, indexes for globalization, free trade and democratization are stagnating or falling. The global liberal order seems to be less and less global, liberal and orderly. We control this planet not because individually we are so smart or so good, but because we know how to cooperate better than any other entity on the planet. Better than chimpanzees or better than viruses. This is our secret of success. If we forget it on the level of a nation or on the level of the entire species and uh, fall into more and more internal and international conflicts, it's not just, you know, the regional wars in the Middle East. It's the threat of, an, of a third world war. It's climate change and ecological collapse. It's the rise of disruptive technologies like artificial intelligence. We need global cooperation on that. If we cannot do that, then humanity has very little chance of surviving the challenges of the 21st century. Thank you.